Now, today we're going to look at a tool in Lightroom that allows you to get that blurred background look to your photo, that shallow depth of field feel, even if you weren't able to do that in camera. Now, there's lots of reasons you might want to do that in editing, right? You might want to have that, that look and that feel to your photo. You might not have had access to the right kind of lens or the right kind of environment or something like that, or you just want to add a bit of separation in your portrait that you weren't able to achieve at the time. So we're going to look at just how easy it is. It's very easy. We're also going to look at when you should do it and maybe when you shouldn't as well. Maybe, you know, what are the kind of parameters around what's going to make this look natural and what's going to make this look a little bit forced and maybe just over edited. Let's dive into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, like I said in the intro, we're going to dive into Lightroom Classic. We're going to take a look at a tool in the Develop tab. So right down here on the right, we're going to come all the way down here to Lens Blur. This is going to allow us to add that shallow depth of field look to our image. Now, we've looked at this before in a couple of different videos, but we're going to do a bit more of a deep dive on how to use this. It's very easy and why and when, right? So a photo like this, for example, was taken with an f4 lens. It's taken 105 millimeters, so we do still have some level of a shallow depth of field, right? The background is blurred. 105 millimeters means we're nicely punched in. So even at f4, we are going to get a bit of separation between our subject and background. But, you know, if we'd shot this on an 85 mil f1.4, for example, it would be significantly more blurred out. So there are situations like this where maybe you're shooting with an f4 lens or even a kit lens. And you want to achieve that look, but you, you just can't really with the equipment that you have available. And believe me, I've been there. I also get it. F1.4 lenses are expensive. Now, is it the best way to achieve this kind of thing? Yes. But, but this, is, this is very good. And actually, if you are using a kit lens and you still want to get that look, it's a great tool to have at your disposal. But let's take a look at a, a photo like this. We'll also look at some other examples which maybe aren't going to work as well because something like this is a, a great example of one that will work well. Not tested it, but because we've got a little bit of a blurred background already, because we've got a defined subject, when I click apply here, Lightroom is going to find the subject in the photo, which should be pretty easy. It's actually very, very good at doing that now. It's then going to work out something called a depth map of the photo, so working out kind of where things are in terms of depth within the photo, and then apply a blur based on that. So as you can see, it has done an immediately a very, very good job. It's very fast. I don't have to touch anything. I can just move on now if I want to. But let's take a look at how it's working. So if I was to actually turn this off and on for a second, so we just hold this little eye icon here, you can see this is before and this is after. So we really are massively accentuating that blur. It looks particularly natural because we already have a bit of blur to work with. If everything was, was super sharp and in focus, it would maybe look a little bit less natural. We'll look at that in a minute. So, okay, let's take a look at exactly how it's doing it so that we know when it's going to work well. Let's look down here. So we've got focus range. Now you can see underneath this, we've got visualize depth. This is what I was talking about just before. Let's tick this on before we even look at anything else so that I can show you exactly what Lightroom is doing. Let's tick this on. And you can now see that Lightroom has created this kind of depth map of the image and it's then showing you where things are located in terms of depth with different colors. So within the photo, our model here is in yellow, right? So this is right up here and towards the left of this kind of range is going to be closer to the camera. So we've got our model closer to the camera here and she is then in yellow on the actual photo. We then move through some colors. We've got a little bit of orange. It's a bit difficult to see there, but we've got some orange, then sort of pink through to purple. And as you can see in the photo, Lightroom's done a really good job of working out that as we get further away from the camera, we go through that pink. So we've got orange much closer through pink and then into purple and then really dark the much further away we get. And so it's applying the blur based on that, based on that depth map. The further away something is, the more separation there is, the more blurred it should become. So if I turn that visualize depth off, you can see that's why it looks so natural, which is fantastic. Now, if for any reason you wanted to focus on a different part of the image, you can actually do that quite easily. We've got this little box here selected, which means that Lightroom is selecting the subject. So it's working out what the subject of the photo is and then basing everything around that. But you can actually select a point in the photo. It's not gonna work in this photo because 
you know, we've got a very clearly defined subject and other stuff is blurred. But if we wanted to, we could define another point using this little tool here. We also have the ability to change up how the kind of bokeh light balls look by just selecting one of these different squares. So for example, right now, we've got the kind of classic circle bokeh like this. I don't know if it's gonna work as well in this one, but let's take a look at something like this. So if I select this, is much gonna change. So as you can see, it's not really made a difference. I find that these are not overly, you know, effective in the photo, but actually I don't think that matters. I don't think that really matters at all. I think what we want from this, at least what I would want is a more natural look to the photo rather than really trying to over, over process it. We want to just accentuate what's already there. Of course, we do have a kind of main slider here, the blur amount. So if we bring that all the way up to something like 100, you can see actually it doesn't look ridiculous. It does obviously bring the blur right up to being very, very strong and intense. It doesn't look awful though, I don't think. But for me, I think, you know, less is more, right? You, you can go a little bit overboard with this sort of thing and not doing it in camera. You want to be careful that you're not you're not overdoing it. So I tend to stick around 50 just to be on the safe side with this kind of stuff. So this photo I think works really well. It's a great example of one that, that works. Let's take a look at a photo that might be a little bit more difficult. Now this is taken on the Leica Q343. So this was shot at F4 as well. Let's see kind of what Lightroom actually does if we just apply this now. So hopefully it'll be able to work out the subject. We've got this foreground element of these kind of leaves on the left. We've obviously got a background there. So let's see what happens. Right, so you can see that this does show a little bit of the limitations of what's possible. It has blurred the background a little bit more. So if I turn this off and back on, that's actually worked, that's worked pretty well. We've lost a little bit of Nala's ear here, but primarily the problem I would say is the plants in the background, which are just above Nala, Lightroom has almost treated it as if it is part of her. And if we visualize the depth, we're probably gonna see that, yeah. So you can see exactly how this has kind of worked. So to deal with a problem like this, we can actually use the brush refinement down here, which allows us to paint on uh, an area for blur or an area for focus, which is pretty useful. This was not part of the lens blur tool when it first was added in Lightroom, but it is in here now. So let's take a look at how we can do this. Let's click blur. We're gonna try and blur these top parts, and then we might use the focus tool to try and bring back part of Nala's ear as well. So first up, I'm gonna bring the flow down down to something like 30%. And the reason for that is it's a lot easier with a lower flow to build up this effect. We can also reduce the amount of blur we're actually adding on. So if we wanted to do it slightly differently, we could bring this down to something like, let's say 50%. In fact, maybe we'll do it this way around. We'll do, we'll do 51. We'll bring the flow back up to 100. And I'm going to adjust the feather as we go just to try and make this a little bit easier. Now, I like to sort of dab this on, and the reason for that is that Lyrum does need to process it. So it just takes a second. If you do too much at once, sometimes Lyrum can process for just a, you know, just a, just a little bit longer than you might want. So let's go ahead and just actually start painting this on. I'm gonna do just across this plant like this, something like that, and then let's make this a little bit smaller. I'm just using the mouse scroll wheel to do that. And let's paint on like so. You can see down the bottom right, Lyrum is sometimes just working out what it needs to do, but that is looking that is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and just do that. There we go. Now, if I wanted to, I could bring that amount up and let's just paint this on like so. There we go. I think that's actually looking pretty good. I'll be honest, if I was retaking the photo, I would probably just move either the plants or move myself. But, you know, it's a great example for how we can use this tool. Let's switch over to focus here, where we're going to leave the amount at 100, the flow at 100, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and just paint in on the ear. Perfect, look at that, that is spot on. So you can see how useful that tool can be for trying to just refine what Lightroom has already done. Sometimes it does an amazing job, sometimes it needs a little bit of help like this. Now there are certainly gonna be lots of photos that don't work very well with this tool. Generally speaking, if you were shooting in a way that would not generate a shallow depth of field, it's probably not a good idea to add a shallow depth of field look to your photo. It's going to look super unnatural and a bit weird. This photo, for example, was taken at 18 millimeters. So even though it shot at f2.8, 
It's pretty wide angle, which means that realistically, it's extremely unlikely to get any kind of shallow depth of field look to this photo. And even if you do, it's going to be very, very minimal. So if we were to apply it to this photo, in fact, I'm not even sure what Lyron would do. Let's go ahead and click apply and see what happens. Right, not much has actually happened here, which is... I would say actually a really good thing. It feels like Lightroom understands how the depth of field should work on this photo and so has not applied anything. Let's go ahead and actually turn this off for a second and back on. All we're doing is actually, it looks like darkening the foreground a little bit and adding a little bit of weird blur at the back, which, you know, is not, I don't think that adds anything to the photo. In fact, it probably takes away from it a little as well. So let's turn that off. I think an important rule of thumb is to think about what is this adding to your photo? Is it is it enhancing the story, the message? Is it helping guide the viewer? Are you accentuating what's already there? Is it an important part of the photo? Or if you're doing it, and I've certainly been really guilty of this in the past, doing it because you've seen blurred background shots on Instagram and that's just what you kind of want because it feels good, that's probably not the right reason to add it to your photo. I think it can be a really useful tool in the right situation. It's not right for every photo. And you know what? Not every photo needs to have a blurred background to make it good, right? Not every portrait needs to have that at all. So I think that's worth keeping in mind, right? What is it for when it comes to your photo? Is it useful for your photo? And think of it as a tool for you to use or not, depending on what's gonna benefit your photo the best. Now, I'd love to know if you have any additional thoughts about the lens blur tool. I think it can be great, but I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments. Is this something you already use, something you plan to use, or do you stay away from it in camera or not at all? I can totally understand that perspective as well. It's always interesting to hear different opinions on this kind of stuff. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future Tutorial Tuesday, let me know in the comments as well, because I'm really keen this year to make the stuff that you guys want to see. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, because there's new content coming all the time. I will, of course, see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.